from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Best Program and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want a higher level of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 46. In episode 44, we used our knowledge of farm animals to begin our description of a wild animal. We assigned homework, which we'll review later in this episode. In episode 45, we used a cultural point of view to research animals. Before written language, knowledge was passed down through stories, sometimes told around the campfire. Now, Some of these stories took the form of folk tales, and many folk tales were about animals. We turn to the folk tale in the last episode. Our good friend Will, who read us a story during our unit on trains and railroads, returned with some friends to deliver a folk tale called How the Chipmunk Got Its Stripes. Following that episode, I tried my own hand at reading a folk tale. Long ago, when the oceans were only half filled with water and just a few stars lit the sky, the birds quarreled loudly among themselves. From sunrise to sundown, the air rang with their squabbles. Birds snatched one another's nests and mixed up the eggs. Some battled over roosts, while others fought tug of wars over worms. Their scrapes raised such a whirlwind of dust and feathers that Chickadee was knocked upside down and Wren tumbled from the perch. Wren is that little bird that had the, the feather sticking up at the back. Stop this rumpus, scolded old mother owl. She hadn't had a good day's sleep since she'd hatched. Can't, 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 called the crow. Someone must put an end to this squabbling, old mother owl continued. Someone must decide where each bird belongs. We need a king. A king, cried Gull. Pass it on. Now, Blue Jay thought that Gull said sing and began to sing, began to whistle. Woodpecker thought he'd heard wing and flew away. Parrot started to swing on a willow branch. Most of the birds paid no attention, for Gull was known to gossip. When Wren cocked his head and wondered who might earn such an honor, a king, old mother owl repeated, a ruler that all will obey. Then I shall be, sing, be the king, said the Skylark. Everyone listens to my sweet voice. He trilled his clear notes over and over. Cree, cree. Wapuli, wapuli, chirped the wren to himself. Now when Skylark had finished, Mockingbird yawned, how dull. My songs are never the same. He mimicked the Skylark's melody, borrowed a bar from Blackbird's tune, and whistled a, a, a measure from Nightingale's too. Show off, scoffed the peacock. I am the one with something worth showing. He strutted before them, fanning his blue and green plumes. Wren ruffled his own white feathers. Heads are better than tails, Raven jeered, since I am so clever. I should be king. You can see the, uh, the peacock here. Respect is what's necessary, hissed Falcon. When I swoop down, everyone trembles. 
Falcon showed his sharp talons. Wren ran inside a hollow log. All the other birds cried, Choose me, 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 me. The racket woke hares and hedgehogs deep in their burrows and frightened the fish in the sea. Hush, hush, hooted old mother owl. Differences between birds don't matter. What's important is what makes us alike. She, she peered about, turning her head from front to back and back to front. Who knows? Now each bird waited for another to answer. Finally, Wren called through a knot hole. Birds can fly. Old Mother Owl nodded. Whoever flies highest and longest shall be king. Now the large birds cheered. Each hoped to win the race and the throne. The small birds protested, but their timid tweeters were not even heard. Look at all these birds. <laughs> so, Wren put his head under his wing to think. Just as the contest began, an idea popped into his mind. Get ready, old Mother Owl declared. Get set, fly. So that's what you see is all those birds flying around. After an hour's flight, little birds tired. After two hours, medium-sized birds wearied. After three hours, even the big birds straggled back to their, their roosts. Buzzard's feathers were frayed, stork, well, he rested on one leg. Only ostrich and eagle remained in the match. Then, with mighty wing beats, eagle soared high into the air, leaving ostrich below like a shadow. Ostrich sank to the ground and refused to fly ever again, even to this day. Eagle circled around overhead, very high overhead. Suddenly, Robin exclaimed, Eagle lost a feather. No, no, that's not a feather, cried sharp-eyed magpie. It's Wren. Remember that little bird with the feather that stuck up? Not noticed, never missed. Wren had hidden himself among the eagle's long quills for a piggyback ride. But when the eagle folded his wings to glide down, Wren fluttered his own and flew up. He caught a tailwind and disappeared into the clouds. All afternoon, the birds watched for Wren's return. Their necks grew stiff from looking up, and a few, flamingo and crane among them, stretched so far that their necks were never the same again. All night, the birds waited, although only the old owl could see in the darkness. At daybreak, a speck appeared in the sky and floated gently to earth. Who do you think it was, that speck? That was Wren. Thank you, said Wren, bobbing his head, for gathering to greet your king. Wren shouldn't win, Ge Eagle grumbled. He used my wings. He used his brain besides, answered Old Mother Owl. One who can do that deserves to rule. So saying, she blinked and shut her eyes. How can we tell how high Wren flew? Swan asked. Mallard quacked, we couldn't see. Look at my feathers, said Wren, as he hopped before them. His white breast was sooty. His, black, his back was brown and streaked with gray. Dingy feathers aren't royal dress, said the eagle scornfully. They are scorched, Wren replied, from brushing against the sun. The sun beaks and bills snap shut. And I looked down on the world and found out a secret, whispered Wren to the circle of birds. Our world is an egg. An egg, beaks and bills dropped open. The earth egg is so big, said Wren, spreading out his wings, that every bird can sit peacefully upon it. 
There will be no need to shove or squeeze, he promised, if you'll follow my rules. The bird stared at Wren. It was quite enough to hear a feather fall. At last, Old Mother Owl opened one eye and murmured, Why not try? Try, 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 called the crow. One by one, small and large, the birds nodded their heads. Then, long live the king, they all said. Order, order, King Wren commanded, and he set to dividing the birds. Some were to live on land, some on water. Some were to nest beneath bushes, others to build the top cliffs. Snow Goose traveled north while Penguin flew far south. Kiwi and Kookaburra went one way, Toucan and Hummingbird another. A few birds, like Sparrow, flitted everywhere. Wren did not disturb Old Mother Owl, for she was napping. So the owl still dozes, while the, uh, still dozes while the other birds sing and is awake when the other birds sleep. In time, when the ocean spilled over with salty water and stars crowded the night sky, peace reigned in the kingdom of the birds. Wren never put on a top hat for a crown or wore a robe with bright feathers. He proudly kept his singed brown jacket. Never again did he venture up very high, preferring to nest near the ground. Yet to this day, Wren carries his tail pointing straight up to the sky so that none will ever forget how he flew to the sun and why he is called the King of Birds. Pretty cool, huh? That concludes segment one of episode 46. We'll be back with segment two after this.